Hello everyone, got another game here for you, special treat. This is Hacker Life Simulator. Let's get that music down, there we go. Um, let's see, what do we got? Hacker Life Simulator. Released but a few weeks ago, July 8th, 2022. Developed and published by DFR Games. Take a team of hackers under your strict guidance and become known to the whole world. Expand your hideout and hack various companies around the world. Become the most famous group in the world. Sounds like a plan. So I know nothing about this uh, other than that. Uh, but it was called Hacker Life Simulator and I saw that it had this strange UI here on the Steam page. And I says to myself, self, this could be exactly what we're looking for uh, i got a progress bar on a computer it's almost full what happens when that fills up it restarts naturally i tell you five seconds into the game shockingly realistic this is precisely what my room looks like right now almost suspiciously so as if the developers themselves are watching me through my webcam and have managed to perfectly recreate my bedroom. We have a refrigerator, if it's not full of balls, energy drink, Red Bulls, and of course, water for the Hydro Homies, then zero out of five stars. We have some toxic substance steaming in the garbage can. Again, the realism here cannot be understated. All right, uh, we have uh, zero of one fridge, one of four trash, zero of one television. Okay, I have no energy. Tab. Okay. Missions, number one, two, three, and four. So, Tease a Bank, Bebra, T, and Clark Company. Uh, red brick is free. Distorted brick costs a hundred people. I have to sacrifice my team to get distorted brick. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had plenty of, uh, CISOs and others in upper management sacrifice people for lesser things, but still seems like a steep price to pay. Versailles parquet, wood planks, PC one. Okay, that's what's then what's two? Okay, those are locked. We can't even see them yet. Oh boy. All right then. And you are. Apparently, I have passed something already. And apparently, I am in Seattle. Uh, there's nothing else here to do. Okay. <clears throat> oh, hey. Even though we can zoom in and out. Okay, then, what are you? A television. Television costs a thousand people. And you are a computer, which costs 10,000 people. Another computer, which costs 5,000, and another, which costs 100. I take it I'm supposed to do something with this, then, since the progress bar keeps filling. Oh, my God. Computer one, plus two, plus three, plus five. All right. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh. Well, I pressed a thing. Two went to a four. A one went to a two. A zero went to a one. And that's how hacking works. All right. So, um, whoa! What the fuck? Uh. Sure. Oh, okay. I can. <laughs> I can move the DDoS. What? Okay. What the fuck am I supposed to do then? Uh. <laughs> uh. Can I? Uh. <laughs> what even is that? Oh, trash. Taking out the trash gave me fifteen energy. What in the hell? Options. Uh, okay. 
hold on is there a manual can i get a can i get a key map or something please um, discussion guides let's go to guides um there aren't any okay uh discussions What's the point? What's the point of the game? After 30 minutes of gameplay, I bought a second computer and 2x level 1 RAM upgrade with nothing to do. Just sometimes click trash cans and fridge. My next upgrade is probably TV, but that costs 1,000 points, which would take me 1.5 hours to obtain with the current speed. There is not tutorial. It just puts you into game with nothing to do. Just wait for circle to fill up over and over again for the idler part of the game. You start with one computer, which gives you 10 points in around... I lost my place because I had to click a link. Uh, in around a one-minute cycle, starting with the prices. Cheapest upgrade is for 100 points. The GUI then says it gives you plus 2 points per cycle, but in reality it gives you plus 3. Second PC for 100 points, which gives you 10 points per cycle. To get to 100 points, you need to wait for 10 minutes with nothing to do. Uh, and it goes on from there. Uh, and then a reply from the developer, differential, different reality games, sorry, different reality games marked as developer. Thanks for your criticism. We will take into account your comments, and in the future we plan to further develop the game and add new features. And that was the day after release, and the comment was on the day of release. Okay. We have one other comment here from the developer. Hello, dear player. We hasten to inform you that our game is at a stage of completion and correction of all errors. We plan to release an update soon, which will fix the problems and add new features. We plan to rework the economy and make the game more dynamic and less boring. We are looking for new ways to diversify the gameplay, and in the next updates, two new locations will be added in which there will be more computers. That is all from now. We welcome your suggestions. All right. So is this an early access game? Is that what I'm looking at right now? Uh, it is not an early access game. It is merely an unfinished game. Uh, very unfinished game. I have 74 people. I just noticed that. Oh, I'm getting people back. Is that supposed to be people? I assume it is, because there is an icon of a person there. Um, but this, okay, so this, it says, uh, this is tagged. The reason I, I picked this game up. It is tagged number one simulation, number two hacking, number three life system, or sorry, life sim, and then number four game development. I think that they meant to tag that as game in development. It boasts in the about this game section, hacker life simulator it is a life simulator of a group of hackers. Use all your skills and resources to capture various companies around the world. Start with the smallest hideout and end up with a layer beneath the big city. Customization in the game, you can change the whole interior, walls, blah blah blah. Hacker case, uh, you're a group of people. Okay, so th this simply just doesn't have all of the things that they're claiming that it has. It's very unfinished. Uh, and yeah, it's an idler game. This is not a hacking simulator, it's this is just an idler game. This is a game that you put on in the background, and occasionally you click things and fill up progress bars, and eventually you'll. I'm sure be able to pay $5.99 to fill up your energy bar and uh, all that shit. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. Um, well, now I have two computers. The third one is $5,000. Um, I have two trash cans now. That's 1000 I don't know what that gets me, though. So I guess when I get $1,000, i will get a TV. Uh, but I am in the exact same boat as that uh, previous commenter. Who was that that said that? That was uh, Slasco CZ. This is exa exactly my same experience. Uh, this is not a hacking simulator. It's not even a hacking game. This is an idler game where you will occasionally click things to fill up your energy bar and wait for resources to accumulate so that you can spend them. That's what this is. Uh, okay, here we go. Hold on a second. There is something to do here. Tisa Bank is a small bank in the Linwood area. It stores all of the savings of the inhabitants of this provincial town. This will be your goal this time. And 
and you need 100 people in order to do it, but that's fine because it's filling up pretty fast. Okay, let's try an attack. Access denied. Calculating hashes. Is there something here for me to do? No. Did it work? What the? Did I click off of the animation? Did it work or not? Uh, I'm going to estimate that this one's going to take about a thousand to fill. Just estimating. And I just spent my people on that and I got nothing out of it? That it was a bust? No, not you. Okay, so then that's what these stats do. You, you pay people to get more people each turn. Um, because it's an idler game. And that's what idler games are about. Upgrading the things and getting more resource accumulation per turn. So, I mean, I didn't get anything out of that first attack, so I super wish that I hadn't done that. It seems odd that I'd get nothing out of doing it since it cost things, but... Um, fair enough, I guess. And, yes, you can also spend those resources on customizing things, I guess. Um, what does it take? Nothing. I'm still at zero of four missions in Seattle, so I'm going to guess that that simply didn't work, that this simply didn't work at all. And there's nothing else I can do about it. I can't attempt again. That fucking sucks. That was a waste. Um, that's what you want in an either game. Wasted resources. Um... I'm I'm waiting for people to accumulate so that I can um, upgrade <clears throat> in these idler games. Typically, uh, my strategy, which I assume is the best strategy, I don't know if it is or not, is to generally first spend your resources on the things that offer the that increase your return over time in order to play the long game. So while you might want the uh, Versailles parquet floors and the distressed brick right away. Um, it's uh, not a good investment to make on account of it doesn't provide any return. Um, and uh, since this requires a thousand and it doesn't say what my return is on the TV, uh, that is quite an investment to make without knowing what the deal is. I also don't know what the hell the energy is for. If I'm spending people, what is the energy for? I don't know. Uh, but uh, anyway, since I have two computers, um, at this point, the best return would be to spend it on these resources because it increases my accumulation of resources over time. And of these resources, uh, the best bang for the buck, so if I go up to this one that I already accidentally upgraded, 100 gets me two more people, 200 gets me three more people, 200 gets me four more people. So it would obviously be better at, on computer one here now to invest that 200 people into another level one random upgrade, whereas down here I probably should have initially saved up the 200 and gone for the CPU upgrade because it's a greater uh, result. But in any event, you're, you're going to end up upgrading the RAM twice and the CPU once in whatever order you end up doing. So it's not a big deal either way. Now, what I don't know is if I click this, uh, if it will increase by two or if this will increase by three. So if I actually upgrade this, I can spend 200 to get two more people per turn, or I can spend 200 to get three more people per turn. I'm not sure because the game isn't explaining that to me. So I don't actually know what my return is on these investments. Uh, okay, so it looks like it's 200 for three more people. So that is a better investment. That's what I should have initially done. I don't know why I'm explaining this to you. Everybody knows this, and if you do or don't you probably don't care either way i do have 100 extra people here so i'm going to do that down here and uh, throw that up and that's increasing now by five more than i had uh, before every turn i still don't know what the point is of the energy bar it says times five though whatever i'm earning i'm earning times five and as they say uh in the investment game um Watch Wolf of Wall Street, teaches you everything you need to know. And if you get times five of anything, you, you go for it. You know? If you got five dollars, 
You can get 25, you go for it. If you got one pile of shit and you can get five, you go for it. Set yourself a manure business. When life gives you lemons, you sell manure. Let's see if we can get that, um, see if we can get that, uh, I mean, I would quit the game, to be honest with you. Um, but it's only been 15 minutes, and I feel like I, I need to give it at least an honest try. See what happens when the energy bar fills up? I don't know. Do I, do I, is that what I should have waited for, for that first mission? Does your energy bar need to be full in order to successfully attack something? I mean, that would make sense, but the game didn't explain that, so I don't know. And I can't try again, so I guess that's just... That's just a mission I'm just not going to pass, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I want to give it an honest try. Uh, we'll at least, at least put a, a little bit of time into it. Um, typically, I don't leave reviews for the games that I, I cover on the channel. Um, unless I really like it or really hated it. So, I'm probably not going to leave a review for this, but I am going to attach the video... Uh, I do do that with all of those on Steam, so hopefully people who see this uh, see that will know what they're in for better than... Um, not that it would have mattered, even if it was a terrible hacking game, I still would have bought it, because that's, that's what I do. Now my energy is going down. Okay. My energy filled up. My energy is going down. And... I don't know. All right, let's invest down. Yeah. And um, let's see. 400 for three more people or 200 for two more people. Uh, okay, that's pretty clear what we ought to do then. And or, well, actually, no, hold on a sec. 400 for five more people. I didn't even look at my GPU down here. Um. What the, why is this going down? What? Yeah, <clears throat> at this point, I think, yeah. I think let's save up 400 and, and upgrade a GPU, if nothing else, just to see. Actually, yeah, maybe we should just save it up and just get the TV and see what happens. That would be that would be new and different. Or we could save up and attack the Tesla analog. That would be something. Oops, that's not the right one. Oh, but we, uh, PCs. I don't know what the point is of upgrading these PCs if we can just buy new ones. Do we have to buy a new one and then upgrade that too? Do we lose all of our upgrades? Again, I don't know. The game isn't telling me, and uh, there's no guide. So I'm going to save up for the TV because I want to know what happens. Although we are mighty close to that GPU upgrade. Yeah, I'm going to throw... Uh, when we get 400, I'm going to throw that up just to see. I don't expect anything different to happen, but... Uh, I'm curious. This is what you get to do while you're waiting for the little guys to fill up. Oh, let's get that energy that I don't know what it does back up. That's probably important. All right, upgrade. All right. Guys, I got a new GPU. We can play Skyrim now. Uh, 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 uh. Chugging along. I'm I, I'm not a big fan of idlers as a genre. Just not a big fan of them. Um, when I was a younger man, I did play an idler game on my phone, which, if I remember correctly, this was long enough ago that it was an HTC Desire. If that uh, dates me at all. Uh, but it was Age of Empires. And I thought that was a pretty decent idler game. I got hooked on it. I didn't play it all the time. It was an idler game, so it's one of those things where it's like, oh, sitting in a dentist office for a while, and, you know, I got my phone on me. I can play Age of Empires. Check my units. Make some investments. Uh, the TV will, oh, you know what, I shouldn't get the TV. I just realized the TV will just provide me another way, most likely, to get energy, because it's with the refrigerator and the garbage can. Why? The refrigerator providing energy, that makes sense, I guess. That's where the Ball's energy drinks are, after all. 
Uh, but uh, <laughs> taking out the garbage providing energy does not. And uh, yeah, it seems like the TV will probably just provide me with, with energy for some reason. So we're not really interested in that after all. Uh, we could save up the thousand, however, and uh, attack Bebra. And this time I promise not to click anything so I can see if it was successful or not. Although I can tell it wasn't successful because the mission ticker didn't come up. This is Seattle. This is, this looks like Times Square to me, so this is probably New York. This is... Chicago? Is that the Sears Tower back there? Chicago? I mean, I don't know if it is or not, but I'm going to call it Chicago. Oh, ah, see, and they put the thing right here next to the things so that you can't barely ever click on it, so. Chicago. Uh, bears. Come on, I need to check, I need to, I need to hack uh, the uh, car people. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, we got some time. We can figure out what the fuck this is supposed to be. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to avoid them? Okay, let's try that. Oh, you avoid them. Well, that is very easy. I need I need scarcely do anything to avoid them. Oh, and this will help us accumulate people faster. Good. Good. Exactly the shortcut we were looking for. This is uh, even less of a game than I thought it was. That's that's where my first mistake was. Assuming that there would be some objective to complete. Some purpose. Some easily discernible set of rules we could follow to achieve a desired outcome. That was my first mistake. Because, I mean... Uh, Let's let's be honest here. Avoiding them is way easier than trying to randomly choose the correct one to touch, which was well, my first my first instinct was okay, the colors must mean something and I must have to get to the green ones and avoid the purple ones. And then I had two green ones come at me and I was like, okay, well that can't be it. And then I was like, okay, maybe it's a guessing game where you just kind of randomly choose which one is the correct one. And there's not really a way to tell which is between them, but it's a bonus game. So, you know, who cares? Okay, now, now it's starting to get harder. It should jump to this a lot faster. It should be this after like five seconds. Yeah, there's, there's, this is, this is now more of, oh shit. So you know, now it's more of a challenge than it was before. Hold on, I want to make sure... Holy shit, that jumped really fast. Uh, yeah, so that does help us to accumulate people relatively fast. Uh, and see, now i got to sit through the slow times for 10 minutes before we can get back to the fast stuff. It, it, should, it should start speeding up a lot faster. We should also be accumulating people a lot faster to accommodate for that, but... Alright, so this gives us a game to this game. It's not a great game. Um, it also doesn't make a lot of sense. It says <laughs> DDoS. <at> the, <laughs> my cursor says DDoS attack, and I'm trying to avoid laptops which have uh, apparently McAfee anti malware on them. Uh, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I don't know if that's what that. Like, I, I, it's just a generic check mark icon, so I don't know. But um, but so, you know, at least this is a game part in the game. Like this is a this I'm doing something I'm engaging with it and I'm earning rewards based on uh, at least a modicum of skill. So I I don't I'm not a, I, I'm not against having mini games in my hacking simulators. Hacking simulators can have mini games. It's it's a game. You can be creative and do stuff like that. That's fine. Of course, this is not a hacking simulator. Uh, it is a it is it doesn't say hacking simulator. I mean, it does say simulator and it does say hacking. It is ta oops, that was totally my fault. It is tagged with that uh, in Steam, which is, you know, how it ended up on my radar to begin with. But it does specifically say in the title that it is a hacking life simulator. And hackers, believe it or not, have to take out their garbage and fill their balls energy drinks up in their fridge 
and uh, assemble their television sets and uh, upgrade their RAM modules and use WAS to walk around their empty warehouse apartments. I mean, this is this is not a, a, an atypical experience in the life of uh, of a hacker, right? It's not all uh, sunglasses and black hoodies, right? Everybody, I mean, we all have to wash our hoodies occasionally. Everybody puts their, um, everybody puts their vans on one foot at a time. It's like everybody else. Come on now, we're getting close to that thousand mark. What I want to do, I want to get this Besla, Be Bez, Bezba, Bezbla. What was the name of the car company? It doesn't matter. Come on now. Come on. Lay it on me. Hit me. Let's do this. Faster, 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 faster. Let's go. DDR style hit the key at the right time game. Those games are fun and profitable. Going curveballs at me now. Fool. Chosen the same pattern too many times in a row. I'm only using a third of my power. Wait, that's too high. That's too high of a level. I should have gone with 1%. Damn it. Sorry, I'm not really an anime guy. All right. Uh, all right, we have over a thousand. Our power level is over a thousand. Now the question is, do we need energy to succeed at a hack? I'm going to guess the answer to that question is yes and so i will wait a little bit to collect as close to 100 energy as i can before i begin the hack because we must succeed we shall and we must the gray abyss surrounds us friends the mists close in and that is why we can never leave the store is only for show. It is a real fake door. All right, come on. Let's get that energy up. I'm getting bored. I'm about to just start the attack anyway, just to get it over with and hope that it goes well. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, trash, trash. <laughs> I would play music for you guys while you wait. I would get a copyright strike because, well, I'm not going to be another person who complains about the YouTube system. I don't need to. I'm sure you've heard it before. And I say that as someone who doesn't really care about uh, YouTube, like as a uh, career or an engagement platform or whatever other influencer shit you can think of. I uh I teach uh things like cyber sociology and governance and stuff. I'm aware of the algorithm and I'm aware of how to game the algorithm. I'm also not willing to do that, which is why I don't edit these videos and I do the bare minimum as far as a thumbnail goes just to make them look nice in my gallery more than anything else. But that's also why I'm essentially talking to myself. Because if this were my career, I could never keep up with it. Seems like too much work for me. 80. Almost there. I think I think when we get to... We'll do the garbage... Oh, hold on. All right. When, when, when we do the two garbages next, we'll be at 100. It'll start going down. We can start the hack as soon as possible. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So... That's why I don't put a lot of effort into this this whole thing. Which, for the uh, ten of you uh, that may see this, I do thank you for watching, and I do appreciate it. It is uh, it is it is nice to. Uh, I mean, I typically do these things just for myself and for fun. Uh, so if you get any enjoyment out of it as well, very glad to hear that. Uh. Eight idler games for this exact reason. All right, and do 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 
attack. I'm not going to click anything. I want to make sure that the animation plays to the end. There's no reason why this shouldn't succeed. Oh, okay, so we did succeed, which means I assume that we succeeded the other one as well. But did we get credit for it? No. Okay, so that explains that. Uh, for some reason, we're not getting credit for the missions. We're not, or unless there's something else we have to do to pass them. But that's two down, two to go. Holy shit. Uh, this is like... Uh, 10,000, it's looking like. 10,000 to do this one. Tisk Book is a well-known social network in narrow circles. It is mainly used by businessmen to exchange important information. The customer needs access to this program. No, thank you. No, thank you at all. Uh, I do have some people. Um, we could... 400 for three... Two for two... Eight for five... Four for five... Three for four... So this is, uh, is our best upgrade right there. And now RAM is back on the menu. RAM's back on the menu, boys, because here we get two for two. And now we get two for three, so that's not as good. Two for three, three for four, eight for five. So uh, two for three is six. And then uh, uh, three for four is... Okay, so it's still up on RAM, I think. And now we get two for four, so now uh, CPU would be our, our best investment on that one. This one we still need, we can still get uh, a RAM upgrade on. Apparently that costs energy too. Or, or maybe it was still on its way down. Let's see. Uh, we could get another computer though. All we need to do is save up 5,000... Uh, RAM upgrade on this other one is still our best bet. And then, then maybe we save the 5,000. Save for the 5,000, I should say. Is this one right? Yeah. I did play um, the D&D &D idler game. What's it called? Idle Legends or something? Played that for a couple of weeks. Um, which was really dull. I idler games in general are really dull, but they're kind of meant to be, right? They're not supposed to be engaging and require a lot of um, a lot of direct face time. It's supposed to be one of those things where you log in here and there throughout the day and check your progress and set your goals, the kind of a thing. Um, but uh, uh, you know, I liked I, I like the characters and, and the art style, and it was uh fun enough i guess but you know i i think i had just reached a point in my life where i was kind of done with the idler game thing um you know uh i i don't as, as uh, uh, there's different reasons uh for people to play different games and i say this as someone who has actually uh studied uh social phenomena in gaming things like you know avatar choices and um direct moral branching and uh, NPC integration and interaction and so on. Um, but I'm no, by no means an expert in the area. I'm just saying that I, I'm not entirely unread on the subject is all I'm saying. But uh, people play games uh, for different reasons. Um, and some people are really attracted to, uh, you know, the dopamine rewards you get when progress is made. Um, you know, which is, you know, also why some people tend to be heavy or have a propensity, rather, for becoming addicted to gambling um, than others, right? I'm not saying the two things are directly commiserate. I'm just saying that some people respond differently to different aspects of games and gaming as a phenomenon. Um, and I'm just not one of those people uh, that really feels a sense of accomplishment with rewards in game unless those rewards feel truly earned in some fashion and 
for me anyway, and maybe you can relate to this, when I say earned in some fashion, I mean personally and intrinsically, I feel as if I have done something specific, um, not necessarily within the context of the game to earn said achievement. And what I mean is that there are some people who are uh, perfectly satisfied and they receive that dopamine rush and, and that reward feeling uh, simply because they you know, can log in, check their progress, they can see that their, their plans are working, and enough time has passed that they, they are complete and they can move on, they get a new skin or something like that, and they're satisfied with that. And then there are other people who need a more interactive experience, and they are perfectly satisfied with achievements that are based on success within the context of the game's rules. Like, for example, the you know they can 360 no scope, they can hit sniper shots from far away, they get uh, you know 80% accuracy or something in a in a first person shooter. Um, and that's a per these are both all by the way, all of these are perfectly valid ways to experience a game or or to get joy out of a gaming experience. It's all fine. Uh, but I do not derive said pleasure from either of those in terms of gaming. I derive uh, pleasure from gaming, from completing objectives, um, or attaining intrinsic rewards that I personally set for myself, or achieving game objectives um, through unconventional means, or by uh, figuring out um, better alternatives, or solving puzzles, um, or in, in some other way outside the, the direct context of necessarily the game's rules, right? So um, that is kind of why I started doing that on this channel, because uh, I get just as much pleasure out of learning how to... Or, well, not learning how to, but I get just as much pleasure from manipulating a game, from hacking a game, um, from breaking it and stressing it and all of that, as I do just from simply playing it. Usually, usually more, because most games are... Uh, by necessity, awful simple. Um, you know, games have to be accessible to the the widest possible berth of of a player base in order to uh, attempt any sort of financial success, um, which uh, typically means that it's not going to be an experience that is tuned to all needs and skill levels. And I'm perfectly abysmal at just about every game that I play, which also doesn't help matters <clears throat> in terms of. Um, my willingness to engage with them because you know my frustration levels arise and I'm not capable of doing the 360 no scoping and stuff and so I feel dejected and you know why even bother competing under those circumstances kind of a thing. Um, so I uh, just now completely lost my train of thought. So whatever I was saying, I have forgotten my uh, point entirely and just like that. So thanks for listening. I guess. All right, what were we doing now? Uh, we can get three for two. Uh, yep, we we're going to do this upgrade one more time, and now we're at four for two, so now we are best bet at uh, three for four. And let's do that, and now I'm going to officially... How long am I doing this? 40 minutes? I think we're just about at the limit where I'm feeling okay. Like we can probably not play this anymore. And I, I get, I, I get the idea of what we're going for. Cause there's no fucking way I'm going to wait until we fill up to 10,000. We are currently, I, I, there's no ticker to tell us, you know, what our per, uh, minute accumulation is, but it looks like we're at about 20 here and about 20 here. So we're at about 40 people per minute. So you can do the math. 10,000 divided by 40 is the number of minutes we're going to have to wait uh, to do this thing. So that's not going to happen. And uh, uh, yeah, I've already been playing 40 minutes, so probably we've been waiting for the 5,000 is not going to do it. But hey, I know what we can do to keep ourselves occupied at least a little while longer. We can play some more of this, and uh, this super fun never dull game will help us also to accumulate people faster, so perhaps we can buy that third computer um, and, uh, maybe, maybe dig ourselves out of this, uh, hole of misery and boredom, existential crisis, and so on. Speaking of, uh, of existential crisis, I don't know where, uh, all of you land on your personal philosophies or anything like that, but, uh, 
my guess, if uh, YouTube demographics are what they are, my guess would be that the majority of people who are going to be listening to this are going to be of the younger generation. And uh, existential crisis sees existential crises uh, and age go together like peanut butter and jelly. So my guess is that uh, if you are of that typical demographic and you are watching this, that you yourself have, shall, or are engaging in your own various existential crises. I get so concerned when I see uh, the general state of misery in American society today. It's kind of hard not to. Uh, it's not really a thing that I previously have ever particularly cared about, to be perfectly honest with you. For the most part, my personal philosophy is that I take care of the things within my sphere of influence, and anything outside of that I simply will not worry about, simply because to do so would be an act of self-destruction. You can't fix everything, so you do what you can, and you have to learn somehow to be happy with that. And if you are not happy with your sphere of influence and the things that you are able to accomplish, then one must do things to expand their sphere of influence, and... Otherwise, just learn to live with doing what you can do. My point is, uh, however, is that that is my position as an older person. And I'm not that fucking old, by the way. Uh, but I am older than most of the people that probably would stumble across this video. And so I would say that that is a position that has come with age. Uh, you know, age does have its benefits. Along with that being... The uh, security and knowledge uh, that most people's opinions do not matter because most people are absolute fuckwits. And so caring what other people think of you is simply a waste of time. I said that to my 16-year-old not long ago, and they said, well, I sure wish I could do that. And I said, you know, no 16-year-old that has ever lived has been able to do that. It's simply not a thing you have when you're 16. You care a great deal about what other people think, but it does come with age, and it is one of the few benefits of it. So, what I'm getting at is that I've been there, uh, and the misery that I see today is not new or unique. It is perhaps more acute than I recall it being when I was a younger man, but at the same time, there is nothing new under the sun, and this too shall pass. But I do recall. As a younger man, I had a particular bent towards nihilism, not seeing really the purpose in about anything. Uh, you see, myself came from very humble beginnings, and I never thought that I would be, for example, doing what I do now, which is, for all intents and purposes, to be my dream job, although, to be perfectly frank with you, my dream job is simply to be paid to do whatever the hell I want to do, but to be honest, being an academic is about as close as one can get to that on this side of heaven, and so I am satisfied with that. But before that happened, I came from very humble beginnings, and I saw myself uh, with very few options available to me, and that made me angry and hopeless and so on. And I won't go all into my personal history and my survival and eventually my release from bondage, my found freedom, and all the things that inspired me to do so, simply because this is definitely not a platform where I feel comfortable doing that kind of thing. But I will say that at some point in my life, nihilism gave way to another thing. And I realized much later on, as uh, a still slightly older younger man, uh, that there was a name for such things. So if you two find yourself to be a nihilist and you find yourself feeling as I did, then I would recommend that you pick yourself up some works by the author slash philosopher Albert Camus. That's C-A-M-U-S. In particular, um, several of his works, uh, for example, The Stranger, I recall uh, vividly uh, being rather... Uh, affirmatory and um, formulative, my personal philosophies. But if you are not the reading type, then I still encourage you to look this up, if you feel as I did, uh, which is that there is a philosophy which is not uh, diametrically opposed to nihilism, and yet 
uh, still uh, makes logical sense, uh, which nihilism does make logical sense. If nothing matters, then what is the point of anything and what is the point of existence? Well, um, absurdism, as it is known, uh, which Camus would be a member of that circle. Um, I guess we'll keep doing this. Um, uh, simply takes uh, the perspective of nihilism, which is a logical position, and accumulates, or I should say not accumulates, I should say um, takes a different perspective. It is a logical position in nihilism, but it is also a matter of perspective, which if you are at all of a thinking kind, you no doubt would agree that any phenomenon may be measurable and accurate in terms of the data that you get from a certain position and yet faulty measurement tools or alternative perspectives of that same measurement can result in different outcomes right there's a uh, <laughs> I, I know that may be a dangerous uh, uh, tact to take in our era of truthiness and uh, statements of alternative facts, but that is still true, and it is a reasonable position to take. Suffice to say that, uh, again, uh, while nihilism and absurdism do share certain qualities in terms of our position in the universe and the nature of our existence, the purpose of life, and so on, absurdism is a much more wise and reasonable course in my opinion at least it was very helpful for me in understanding that while our personal existence may not have cosmic significance that does not mean it is insignificant sometimes we need to be satisfied as i said with merely doing what we can in our sphere of influence which does have an impact if not again cosmically then at least in the scheme of our short existence and whatever may persist beyond us now with the imminent heat death of the universe it may not seem that significant but um, we have to satis be satisfied with significance for significance's sake at times things don't need to be grand or permanent on a cosmic scale in order for them to be significant um, simple acts of kindness can have untoward and unknown ramifications that persist perhaps beyond certainly if not necessarily our existence beyond our perception and it is a an equally reasonable tack uh, uh, tact to take to say uh, that if we cannot observe a phenomenon or the impact of our actions the impact of our life uh, then at the very least we should assume that uh, it meant something. Or, to put it into um, absolute simplest terms, whereas nihilism will take the meaningless of life as a um, uh, hold on a sec, I lost my train of thought again. Because uh, I was looking at the pretty colors. Um, so yes, whereas nihilism may, may take the tact that uh, existence is uh, is meaningless and that's not necessarily a bad thing although it is not a good thing it is essentially a perfectly neutral thing absurdism will at least say that uh while existence may be meaningless that doesn't mean or i should say on a cosmic scale that doesn't mean it doesn't have any meaning and that it actually is a good thing because it frees you up to find your own meaning and when I read that as a younger man I realized you know it occurs to me that me with my proclivities and my uh, necessary essential problem with authority which is unfortunately not a phase I grew out of um, that if I did live in a universe where there was most certainly a creator and I had a divine purpose a destiny which was unalterable uh, that I would never be satisfied in such a universe to begin with. I would n I would never be okay with merely living a life I was handed. So for me, that revelation was quite significant. And I think, well, I guess that's what I think. Um, I'm done with this. I'm bored. What else we got? We're only at around 3,000. We have so far to go. I don't think I'm going to make it. 
I don't even see the purpose in, uh, in, in, in getting the other computer. I get the other computer just so I can accumulate more resources. I get accumulate more, more resources so I can wait to get more resources. Um, and the cycle continues as idler games do. Here, let's get the TV there. We spent some money on a TV. Um, here, let's spend our resources on this. So we have, uh, two for four here. We've got three, four, six. And here we got five, four, eight. And here we got the. So this is our next best. And then these, if I am doing my math correctly. I believe so. Well, I suppose that's enough idler game and uh, waxing philosophical for a time. You managed to hang through that then uh, i appreciate you listening to me jabber on while i mindlessly did a task i uh, don't recommend hacker life simulator i can't relate to this at all uh, and it's not really much of a game it's an idler game so actually you know let's let's take a look at this from a different perspective here so it's it's not a hacking simulator it, it probably shouldn't be in that category um it uh, doesn't even bother to have really any of the trappings or aesthetic of a hacking game um it has ddos attack on the mini game that's accompanied with it other than that it's pretty much uh nothing uh at all in within the hacking genre uh, it doesn't have that aesthetic or anything at all so as a hacking game big no this isn't it you know this isn't the game you're looking for keep going um as an idler game i guess it's fine um I'm not a big fan of the genre to begin with, and I, I don't have that many games under my belt in the genre to form a basis of opinion. I can say it was a lot less fun than Age of Empires, but I don't even know what happened to that game. I don't even know if it's still around. Um, it's probably about as good as um, Idle Legends, the D&D the &D idler game. But again, it's been a while since I played that. They might have made some updates to that too. So, um, But as an idler game, it's doing idler game stuff. Um, I would appreciate a tutorial. I'd appreciate a little more explanation of what's going on. I'd appreciate some more variety of tasks. Um, I'm sure that pay to win is, you know, in the works for this game, as all idler games are kind of pay to win. You pay and you fill up your energy bar. You pay and you renew your people. You, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, but this game doesn't have that yet, and I, I will at least give it credit for that because it's, you know, it's not an early access game, but it also doesn't seem to be a uh, hundred percent. Uh, finished so maybe they'll be adding some stuff like that later um i don't hate it um you know like I, I as a hacking simulator it's a big no um but um as an idler game i don't i don't hate it it's fine uh you know it, it, it might might even be fun with a couple of additions um although who plays idler games on their pc these days i would never an idler game on the pc outside of doing this channel so i guess there's that but i guess i i guess my conclusion is that uh, is a no it's not for me and if you enjoy it then i understand and you're welcome to enjoy it and that's about it take care